uh, our case seed student monthly meeting. Uh, I'm Makomere Gilbert. I'm a student at uh, Oklahoma State University uh, in human development and family science with a concentration in gerontology. Uh, I'll moderate uh, today's session with the help of uh, Professor Charono. And without wasting time, uh, we have our, our presenter today, who is uh, Emma Michelle, who is a system analyst from South Carolina, who will take us through uh, the topic of uh, breaking uh, career barriers for students on how to find uh, a great mentor. Emma, welcome. Thank you. Can you hear me? Am I on? A... Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for the uh, great welcome. It's an honor to be here. And let me just say that I wish when I was a student, there was a platform like this. I think I have told Dr. Gerono so many times, um, she is doing an amazing job because when I started, I had a hard time figuring things out, just trying to understand the environment, the culture, as well as trying to figure my way out. So I am happy to be here and grateful um, for this moment. Before I start, I had sent out a, a poll to find out what everybody, who everybody's trying to be when it comes to um, their career path. And I got a few responses, not too many, but um, enough nonetheless. So we have some good career aspirations. Some people want to be doctors, some people want to be chemists. Let me see what's that. Chemists, um, we had uh, one that wants to work in medicine. So we had a lot of STEM career related um, responses, which is great because that is my area of um, mentorship for the most part. Um, today's session, I want to cover the college guide to finding a great career mentor. One of the reasons that um, for me in having a mentor is a lot of opportunities that you get in terms of the coaching, leadership skills, and um, building your confidence. So before I even get into how you can find one, I just want to know from the room or those online, how many of you have a mentor? If you have a mentor, whether one, two, or three, just say one, two, and, 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 and let me know. So how many of you have mentors and how many do you have? Let me see. Gilbert, how many do you have? I have two. Two, great. Mm -hmm. Peter, do you have a mentor? I am a mentor myself, but uh, I, I have been mentored before in life. Okay. That's the only way I could um, actually be a mentor myself. So, yes, I've had several mentors in different levels. Great. Different what, about levels. You? what about you, Mr. Anyama? No, I do not. Okay. <laughs> so, for... And I'll make this a little bit interactive as much as I can. So for those of you that have a mentor, what is your one reason for having a mentor, whether it's one, two, or three? Uh, Gil, but you said you have a mentor. How many, you, what is your main reason for having a mentor? Uh, my main reason for having a mentor mostly is uh, a person whom you fall back to when, when you, you think, uh, when you doubt your strength, when you doubt your journey, and you need like someone to like give that assurance that what you are doing is, is okay. I've been there, I've gone through what you've gone through. These are the steps I took. So that's my main reason for a mentor, someone whom I can fall back to and they, I'll get that reassurance. Great. What about Mr. Jeremiah? Do you have a mentor? Uh, yes, I do have mentors. Good to see you all. I, I do have mentors. I'm, I'm old school, but still <laughs> I do have mentors uh, who help me in uh, my profession. Great. 
So I personally think that mentors, regardless of how old or experienced you get, um, a mentor is always a good guide to have, regardless of however long you have been in your career or in, in just in life. And for me, mentorship is, and so I will share how to guide and find, finding a mentor based on my experience. One, to me, a mentorship is a give and take relationship, meaning that when you find a mentor or somebody approaches you to be your mentor, um, it's not uh, for you to get everything from them, but it should be a give and take relationship. So from my experience, having a mentor, um, it doesn't stop however old you may get or however knowledgeable you may get. What does everybody else think in terms of, um, is there a stopping point when you, it's enough to have a mentor or uh, what, how do you feel? I guess I'll pick Dr. Gerono this time. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all were not expecting this, right? <laughs> no, no. So what was your question? <laughs> um, do you feel that there's a time in life it gets where you don't need a mentor? No, nope, I always need a mentor. I have Great. mentors right now. I have two mentors and I would always need a mentor Ooh. actually. Um, for having a mentor. Yes. Actually in life, I, you need a mentor and you also need a sponsor. So I have both. I have two mentors and I have several sponsors and I'm always looking for sponsors. So <laughs> if you're willing to be one. <laughs> <laughs> you and both, you and me both. We are all, I'm always looking for sponsors as well. Yes. Yes. Uh, great. So we are in agreement with Dr. Gerono that it never stops to, um, um, there's never, for me at least, there's never a time where I don't need a mentor. When I, when I first came to America, um, I did not know, I had not worked at all in any capacity. So for me coming to America, I came straight as a student. And by the time I was realizing what work was, I was working for the bills. And for a long time, I worked to pay the bills in school but not necessarily to learn or grow my career until somebody noticed my value and my expertise and said, why are you still working in the same job for so many years when you can do something else if you did X, Y, Z? And so they recommended that I do a certification, which was a great propeller for my career, um, but without that person coming to me and telling me that, hey, you know you could do something different. I was comfortable. I was, I, I settled in other words. So a mentor bridges the gap in your classroom learnings to the real world experience. For me, a mentor is somebody that has more knowledge and experience, not necessarily in, in, in years, but just in, in life in general. And they've gone through some of the things that I may not have realized, or I may be looking forward to becoming, and they know a little bit more than I do. So for me, a mentor is somebody that can guide me, can show me the way in which to go. Um, so for, I don't know what's your reason for looking for a mentor or being here today, but you have a reason, the topic probably inspired you or you wanted to, be, to learn what I had to say, whatever your reason is, a part of you is looking for that guidance from somebody that is a mentor. So a mentor to me, again, is somebody that has a li little bit of a higher level of experience and knowledge and can guide you in, in helping you figure out things that you, whether it's a career that you want to go into, they're already in that career path or um, they are already have graduated from a degree that you aspire to go to. It gives you a greater chance of career success. So my few recommendations and tips to keep in mind is one, a mentor can help you build your soft skills. Most people, um, sometimes, especially for me, I would say having grown up in Kenya, um, there are just certain cultural habits that I had and I didn't realize that were cultural habits, I thought it was the norm. So when you grow up in an environment, um, what you grow up with is what you think is right. A mentor can help you see things in a different light, especially if it's a mentor from a different culture. So my suggestion is if finding and looking for a mentor, always look for somebody that is, has a little bit of a different experience than you do in terms of culture or in terms of just where they grew up. Um, 
don't always look for a mentor that is just from your country or that looks like you because you will learn you will end up with the same experiences or the same knowledge. You want to expand your mind and critically think about some of the things that you do or learn and, and question yourself. Um, is it right? Is it wrong? Um, can I do it different? And so it's okay to look for a mentor that doesn't look like you, doesn't speak like you, is not in the same lineage as you, but can help guide you. Some of the things, another thing that a mentor can help you with is increase your confidence. So for me, um, some of the things that I have wanted to do, I seek a mentor to help me build my confidence in an, in an, in an area that I was not so um, confident in. So as much as your experience, I'm a senior level in my career, sometimes you get that, what do they call it? Imposter syndrome. And at times you need somebody that tells you that you know it or, you know, that just guides you and tells you you're doing it right or you're not doing it right or you could do it a little bit different. So again, a mentor can help increase your confidence. A mentor, a mentor can also help you with decision making in your career choice, whether you're transitioning or you're in college trying to decide what you want to do, a mentor can help you with that. And so it is critical for you as you think about having a mentor to decide what are those things you want your mentor to help with. Um, for those of you that have more than one mentor, I recommend the same for those that do not have a mentor. Um, you, a mentor you don't have to have one mentor because several mentors can have different skill sets and they each can contribute to your knowledge and your career growth without necessarily depending on one person to give it all to you. So be open to expanding your network and horizon with meeting other mentors. Even if there are, you have three or four mentors in the same career path, they all bring different experiences and knowledge, whether it's different companies they have been in or different um, colleges they've gone to. So be open to seeking out um, experiences from different mentors, even if they are from the same career path. You don't, you don't need to be tied to only one. One other thing that a, career, a mentor can help you with is avoid career progression mistakes. I did not know. Like for me, like I said, it took me a long while before I realized I was settled or I was in the same zone for too long um, just because I was there to pay the bills without realizing that there was much more to what I could offer the society. So a mentor can help you discover skills in you that you don't even know you have. So um, that's why I recommend a mentor. So what can you do as a mentee as you seek out a mentor? Right now we are in November. My challenge to you is identify what what is your reason for wanting a mentor in the first place? Don't just look for a mentor because you attended a session and Emma said you need a mentor. Um, having a mentor is a personal choice, um, but it's a great opportunity for you to grow and build your career, um, career skills uh, and, and, and learn what is out there for you that you may not be uh, aware of. While preparing to seek out a mentor, set two to three goals that you want to focus on when it comes to working with a mentor. So just because you look for a mentor, it doesn't mean that the mentor needs to tell you what to do. You need to come to the mentor prepared with what you want to get from them. So that you, when, you, when you have those sessions, they are more impactful and they're more valuable to you and the mentor as well. Also remember what I say that a mentor is, a mentorship is a give and take relationship. So don't get into the mentorship relationship expecting to just take and not give back. The instances where I have been a mentor, I have actually learned more than I, I felt like I gave back because while the mentee came to me for knowledge and experiences, as they shared their fears, I also learned that I also held some of the fears. And so together, we learned how to overcome them. So remember, a mentorship is a give and take relationship and not a one-sided or a one-way um, path. Identify why these specific goals that you choose and decide that you want to be mentored on or to pursue are important to you. If you can't, if you don't 
figure out why those goals are important to you, then both you and the mentor will be lost as to why you're even having the relationship in the first place. So identify the reason you want to have a mentor, set two or three goals. And I set the number two to three goals because when, when you start to knock down the goals, if you have 10, 15, 20 goals, then you will get lost and you will get overwhelmed and feel like I haven't accomplished anything. So don't focus on everything that you want to learn. Focus on two to three very important goals that you want to accomplish within now and maybe the next six months. And after six months, identify two or three more goals that you want to accomplish and knock them out and find those ment mentors for those particular goals. While identifying these goals, also identify obstacles that may hinder you from getting a, a, a fruitful relationship in the mentorship opportunity. So when somebody sacrifices their time to be your mentor, you also have to, to be able to, to give back and have the time to meet the mentor halfway. So make sure that you identify any obstacles before you even seek out a mentor. Are we together or are we still, are we sleeping? <laughs> Any questions so far? Great. So I hope that the next one is identifying the target dates as to when you want to achieve your goals. So you identified why you need a mentor. You set the goals that you want to accomplish. You identified the obstacles that may hinder you from accomplishing those goals because you don't want to approach a mentor when you are not ready. You need to be ready so that when they are available to you, then you, are, you can maximize that opportunity. Then identify the target dates when you want to achieve those goals. When you set target dates, it means that you are going to make yourself accountable. Like I said, mentorship again is a give and take relationship. So if you set goals, also set when you, are, you want to accomplish those goals. For this, for this particular one, it's with that particular mentor. It helps you and the mentor focus and get more narrow on what you're trying to achieve. That way, when you walk out of the relationship, you can walk away with something tangible because you can track your progress and know that you have actually accomplished what you're trying to gain from the mentorship. So let's say in December, between now and December, that's your preparation phase. What you want to, why you want a mentor, what are the goals you want to accomplish when you want to accomplish them. In January, you set yourself to start looking at the job requirements for the career path that you want to pursue. Remember, you have already decided, these are the things I want to, to accomplish as part of my career growth or getting into the career I want to go to. So in January, you need to, to now figure out what is that job that I want to pursue by the time I graduate college. Um, then you also want to identify what life skills do you want to also build as part of your career growth. Because just because you pursue a career doesn't mean that your life is separate from it. So there are things in your life or in your, in your life skills that you may need to build. And you need to identify those as well because you'll need mentors to help you, guide you, um, like overcoming cultural barriers or overcoming cultural differences. What are those things um, that you need to, to work on as well? Whether you work on by yourself or you find a mentor to help you do that, those are things that you also need to put in mind. Then once you have identified the job requirements for your career path, then you will need to also identify the job skills that you need help with. So remember there's your goal, just the overall goal, maybe the career path that you want to take, but then now you want to, to identify what are the specific skills I need help in building for that particular job that I'm trying to go to. Once you have identified that, then look at what are your potential networks that you can find mentors, whether it's the CASID or it's your, your, your school or it's your professors, who are those people that you can tap into to get a mentor? Those are things that you have to think of and prepare for before you even get to let me now find a mentor. Once you have identified that, then you're going to define a schedule for yourself. What works for you? Again, remember, when you're looking for a mentor, you don't want to approach the mentor. And when they say, yes, I'm available to you, when can we start uh, meeting? And you say, oh, I don't know. I have to go figure it out. No, by the time you're getting and approaching a mentor, you should be ready. 
you should be so prepared that they all they have to do is say I am so glad to be your mentor and I don't have to figure these things out for you because at the end of the day, you're the one looking for the mentor, not them looking for a mentor. So remember to, the more prepared you are for your mentor, the more willing they will be to give you more because they'll feel like you are committed and you want to actually truly accomplish your goals. Now, this is between December and January. Any questions so far? Comments? <laughs> Too much? All right. I think uh, one thing that I would say is um, it, it's also very important that um, as you seek a mentor, um, try to approach them from a friendship perspective. S create a relationship. Meet, you mm -hmm. know, before they become a mentor, the people that have become mentors to me over, over time and even people that I can say are still mentors to me in my career, they're my friends. I, we, we had something else going on, um, whether it is professional and we have those discussions until we, you know, and then I realized this person is really motivating me to do certain things and therefore they became a mentor. So I think it is a different thing if somebody just came to me and said, can you be my mentor? And I, I don't even know who you are. You know, if you have the opportunity to create that relationship earlier, it goes a long way. And very, that, that very way, true. just like you said, um, it is not so much giving all the time. Then they, they, they feel like they're also getting um, something in return that, that yeah, friendship, sure. that relationship. So uh, if you have an opportunity, it's great to have, uh, to create that friendship as time goes on. And then if it's usually the friendship will come because that person is either in your area or in, you know, they have the similar goals that you maybe, or you have, um, you have a goal that they have attained that you want to get to. And therefore, they, you, you have a lot of things in common you can talk about. So mentorship sometimes come, comes in automatically, not necessarily from you know, saying that I want you to be my mentor. It comes from that natural process of getting to know each other. So when we have that opportunity, it's good to create the, the relationship. Very much in agreement with you. And that takes me to my next set of how to find a great mentor. Like Mr. Peter said, um, so I'm giving you a timeline. We, we started preparation in December, November, December. In January, we are preparing ourselves, getting ready for our mentor. And by the time February gets here, then you are making it purposeful to network, create those relationships so that you can find a mentor. Like Mr. Peter said, you can't just go to a person and say, hey, can I be a mentor? Can you be my mentor? And they don't know you because of, I have no clue who you are and why do you even think I should be your mentor? So creating that relationship comes from networking. Um, you can't, so one big mistake that I made while I was in school was to think that when I graduate, I will automatically have a job. It just doesn't work that way jobs in most times comes from relationships you have built while you are in college. So it is never too early to start networking and building purposeful relationships that end up either as friendships or people that can guide you in your career. So network as much as you can, and then you will end up finding a mentor. The next thing is agree on how often you want to meet with your mentor. Once you find that mentor, and they agree to be your mentor, then agree on how often you want to, to meet with that mentor. When you make it purposeful, then they set in their mind that I want, I have, I have to set a schedule, I have to set time aside for this particular person. So remember that mentors just like you have a busy schedule, have their own jobs, have their own families, they have many other things going on. So it's upon you to, when you're, when you're working with your mentor, be mindful of their schedule and their time, and you work 
collaboratively to decide how often you want to meet and what is the frequency. Do you want to meet every month? Do you want to meet every week? I would say starting up, starting out slower than uh, faster is better. You know, um, start off as once per month. Then as the relationship progresses and you build a better rapport, then you can make it more frequent because now you will realize that the relationship will probably change into something that is more friendship-like than just a business um, relationship. Then follow up on assigned activities. So when you find a good mentor, most times they will assign you activities because it is not the mentor's job to do your work. The mentor guides you, the mentor gives you uh, opportunity and resources for you to find what you're looking for. But their expectation is that you will come back and say, from what you told me, this is what I found out. At least for me, that is what has worked out. For the mentors that I have, I make it a point to keep them updated consistently, whether it's um, per month, or it's per week, depending on the relationship I have with the mentor, I keep them updated on what I'm doing or based on how our relationship is. So if it's a mentor that guides me in my, let's say, presentation skill, after this talk, I will go back to my mentor and let them know, hey, I had a talk, this is what I presented on, can you give me feedback what you think I could improve on? And so they will guide me and help me know what I did and how I could improve on. Whatever feedback they give me, I should not just sit on it. I should take that feedback and act on it, whether it's with the next presentation or it's doing what they asked me that I need to do. Then I need to come back again and let my mentor know that I have done what you, what you, what you advised and this is what I came up with. Again, you take initiative for your own career and your own progress and your own learning. I can guarantee you no mentor will stop mentoring you. They will want to do more for you because they will feel that you are committed to your own personal development. So take initiative for your own uh, progression and your own learnings and the mentor will, if, will automatically be drawn to just help you more. Um, and as I always say, it is important to evaluate the relationship you have with the mentor because some relationships, some mentorship relationships are not meant to be forever. Some mentorship relationships are meant to serve a certain season and reason for it at a time. So you often want to evaluate the relationship you have with your mentor and see if it's, if it's, if it's beneficial for both of you. If you need to remain friends or you need to continue with a mentorship relationship, just like dating, at some point you decide whether you want to move on into being husband and wife or you want to remain friends or you want to keep dating and being friends with benefits. Whatever it is that you want to get out of the relationship, at some point it has to have some evaluation so that you know if it's benefiting both of you, if you need to reevaluate change or maybe um, reevaluate how your relationship is. So that is also important to have evaluation, constant evaluation. Now, a few things that you need to know what a mentor is not. I have said what a mentor is, what a mentor can help you with. It is also very important to know what a mentor is not. When you know, don't come in with the expectation that a mentor is going to make decisions for you. They are not your decision maker. Mentors are not responsible for deciding for you. Mentors are responsible for helping guide you and providing you with resources that can help you research to make better decisions. Sukosawa, oh, this is, <laughs> how are we together? I forgot this is a global. <laughs> yes, Tukosawa, Tukosawa. <laughs> tukosawa. Yeah, so um, your mentor is not your decision maker. They can help you, they can guide you. Um, but a good mentor should let you take lead in making decisions for yourself. That is somebody who wants the best for you because if you think about it, if somebody constantly makes decisions for you, when you are out there by yourself, you will never be able to stand by on your own two feet because you will always be dependent on that person. A mentorship relationship should never be a dependency relationship. It should be so independent that even if you're not with your mentor, you can confidently make decisions by yourself. A mentor is also not your counselor, nor are they your therapist. There's a reason people go to school to become therapists. There's a reason people get 
licenses to become counselors. Know the difference. So be personable, make friends, friendship, be relatable, but leave personal problems out for your counselor and your therapist. It creates for a balanced and equitable relationship. Uh, a mentor is also not your trainer. There's a person that is specifically meant for training. A mentor is, guys, a trainer is there to give you those specific skills and knowledge because they are either, that is their risk. And, and a mentor can be a trainer and, a, and, and, a, and a, a mentor, but when they are a trainer, they will tell you they are a trainer. They will specifically call themselves, I'll train in this. They will not say, I mentor in this. Most times you would have to pay for that training. So don't come to a mentor that has a specific skill set and expect that they are going to set time aside to sit with you and start literally walking you. Let's say it's a software that they're going to walk you through learning that software step by step. That is not their job. They can guide you with resources and where you can find learnings, quality learnings to help you build knowledge in that particular software, but not necessarily train you in it. Does that make sense? I hope so. All right, so again, one mentor cannot be a solution to all your career problems. Remember that you can have more than one mentor, have 10 mentors, have as many mentors as you want, as long as you can have date them. Remember that every person has a busy schedule and they have their own personal things going on and they have their own probably mentorship relationships they have going on. So however many mentors you have, be respectful of their time and their resources and uh, make sure that you can accommodate them. So that's why I said make sure to set two to three goals. That way you don't overwhelm yourself and you get the most value from the few mentors that you may have for a specific period of time that you want the mentorship on. And then mentorship is neither mandatory for you nor the uh, mentor. It is a give and take relationship. And if it's not working out, it is okay to say that, I don't want you to be my mentor anymore. And I don't want to be your mentee anymore, or I don't want you to be my mentee. So it's okay to fire your mentor, in other words. Don't feel that you have to stick with the mentor just because they're giving you free resources. It's okay sometimes. It's, it's actually better not to have a mentor than to have a bad mentor that may not have your best interest at heart. All right, so this is the meat of the whole session today. Places that you can find mentors. For me, I found mentors by just being a volunteer, a youth mentor volunteer. Um, when I volunteer, I end up meeting people that we just connect on various levels. We talk and I realize that, hey, I wanna learn more from you, is it okay? And one of the things I just clearly say, is it okay if we can have a cup of coffee? Is it okay if I can set up a Zoom session for us to just talk some more? I like what I had from you. One other way I approached one other mentor was through LinkedIn. I attended a conference. I loved how they spoke, I loved how they presented. And I literally, after the presentation, I found them on LinkedIn and sent them a message and said, hey, I really enjoyed your presentation. I loved how you approached it, how you, you made people interactive. Can I learn some tips from you? Now, they could not meet me every single month, but they gave me a whole spiel, I mean, of everything they could give me. I was more, great, more than grateful for just that. Not everybody will agree to be your mentor on a monthly basis, a weekly basis, or whatever it is, or whatever frequency. But they may be okay with periodically just sending you tips. And it's okay to say, hey, I know we can't meet face to face, we can't meet on Zoom session, but can you periodically just send me tips on how I can improve? Or is it okay if I can once in a while just ask a question? So however you build that mentorship relationship, it's between you and that person. But don't be scared to ask. Don't be scared to initiate the conversation. Don't be scared to initiate the frequency. Again, I, if you don't ask, you don't get. That's just the American culture. You have to ask. And 90% of the time, more, than, more people are willing to be mentors than you will ever realize. You just have to ask. Um, 
Facebook career and professional groups are also a great place to find uh, mentors. And then of course, church and social gatherings. If you're a person that goes to church, that is a place you can also find mentors. Uh, professional associations or chapter networks like um, specific industry organizations. For me, being a systems analyst, networking groups like the IIBA or PMI, or the Black Data Processors Association, NSBE, those are organizations that I often find people that can guide me in some of the things that I'm trying to learn. Then there's also some events like the Network After Work event, industry conferences. If you ever find a chance and a conference is free, trust me, you it is okay. Attend that conference. Connection that is going to help you. Whether it is just in knowledge sharing or just as a friend, you will gain more value than you will lose attending a conference, even for an hour. Take, make time for conferences. Don't make the mistake of waiting until you graduate. They are more valuable when you're even in college. Then um, volunteer networks will also be helpful. Um, so in terms of any questions so far, Uh, Miss Mitchell, yes. this is this is an amazing presentation. In fact, you've really made me feel guilty. I need to go back. There's, I have one of my mentors that I've not followed up for a while. So before <laughs> I go to bed tonight, I hope he's not listening because I am guilty. I have not followed up. <laughs> because of COVID, there's been so much that is going on that I've just been so busy to, to follow up with them. Uh, this is great information and uh, the fact that you're sharing. One of the things that I wanted to share was... Uh, uh, networking is key and um, the question that I have for you is in terms of networking for international students what advice do you have for them because like we have sessions like this they don't take advantage of it uh, you see most of them they are not in community events they do not participate in the community they do not come to conferences maybe those students who are here can tell us but most of the times you see them when they have a problem. So what do you tell them? Because I've seen a lot of them, you know, you have a group of athletes, they're all together, they stay together and they're all clusters. But they do, you, you know, very few of them come to uh, Kenyan churches or a community or community events. You know, they stay on their own, but then, you know. And, 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 and <laughs> I, I agree with that. And unfortunately part of it is just cultural like i said um one of the things that i specifically mentioned when i was starting was that when you're looking for a mentor don't just look for your from your community because sometimes the mentors that out in fact mentors that are outside of your community like the for me i have found a lot of knowledge and just cultural breaking cultural norms from what I thought was just normal from um, my American counterparts. But to answer your question, a lot of international students come with one way of thinking because we were raised to think that you go to school and once you graduate, you're gonna get a job because that is the way I came again. By the time you realize that you need to network for these jobs, it's too late, you have already graduated and people that were networking have jobs and so that is where interacting and commingling with people from outside of kenya is also very important because it breaks your cultural um norms not in a bad way but in a way that opens your mind to see beyond what you just know or think is the right way so i'll tell you for most of these students because they are in clusters of so most of them came in as, uh, what do you call it, athletes. So that's what they know is comfortable, it's safe. It's that safety net that they're looking for. And so sometimes it, it helps, it's on us, some of us that have been here longer, to keep hammering and keep saying that you gotta get out. And sometimes it's just dragging them into these events. Gilbert, you're here, drag one person, it takes just, Call one and say, hey, I just want you to, you don't have to attend for the whole session, just attend for 30 minutes. 
you see. And so with Gilbert, you pull, for me, like the way I run my mentorship program, I say, not everybody's going to come, but if I have five, that's enough. And so I need you five to go pull one of each of these students for the next session. Drag them in. Because 30 minutes only, or five minutes only, is an insight into something they did not know. So that is my advice is, for those that are attending, just pull one, one at a time. It takes one to pull the other, and eventually you will have all of them attending. So you have to make it purpose. Unfortunately, for most of our students, they come in with fears, a lot of fears and a lot of heart, you know? So a lot of people are coming from church heart. They've been hurt by the church. They've been hurt by Kenyans. They've had negative stories about Kenyans. And so they're like, I don't want to associate myself. And so while there are bad apples, there are also good apples. And so the good apples have to try and pull those ones that you can see, especially if you see a student has great potential, by all means, don't let them miss out on great opportunities because they probably just don't know. If it didn't take my Nigerian friend telling me, Emma, go do this certificate. I was comfortable. And yet there's so many Kenyans that had those, the certificate, you see. I was comfortable because nobody had told me otherwise. I just knew I needed to pay bills because the people I was hanging around with, we were all paying bills. And as long as our bills were paid, we were okay. And so as long as you're around the same people over and over again, you will never see what else is out there. And that is why getting a mentor really opens up your mind frame and your, opportun your windows of opportunity and knowledge. Um, just to finish up, I talked about setting goals. When you set goals, you need to set smart career goals. Um, and I'll give a few examples. So for example, between now and December, I need to decide on a career path to take. That is my goal, okay, for example. But how will I track this goal? How will I know that I have actually accomplished meeting this goal? So my goal is to decide on a career path to take between now, if you are a student, between now and December. And how you will track this goal is by identifying three possible career paths that interest you, okay? So don't wait until you graduate to decide this is the career path I wanna take. And so this is when now I wanna look for a mentor. The minute you join college, you should be deciding which three options you want to pursue in your, in your career path. Once you decide on those three options, even if later you change your mind, at least you'll be focused in building your path to get that job. So immediately you graduate um, college, you would have already known that I'm looking for A, B, and C. And so you will constantly value, put your value in getting the skills, the mentors, the, the career opportunities, whatever it is, you'll be focusing on those three things that you're looking for. Then how do, you, uh, how do you know that you have achieved this goal? How can you measure that you are achieving this goal? What can you do? And so you can talk to career mentors, you can talk to other graduates. So if you're pursuing a degree in computer science, go to LinkedIn, type in computer science, see which people have degrees in computer science and what are their, are their job titles. From all those options that come up, pick three. Don't pick five, don't pick everybody, just pick three. That's all. And then why do you need to do that? It will help you focus and narrow down your job skills so that you are leaning towards something. And like I said, choosing an option does not mean that don't change your mind. It just means that you can now make it purposeful in everything that you do, whether it's studying, whether it's making your resume, whether it is networking, you will now be looking for conferences that are specific to those career paths. And it's okay to attend other conferences that are not specific to all those career paths, but for every one conference you attend not related to your career path, you are attending four that are related to your specific career path. That means that you're constantly opening your windows of opportunities to those specific things you have chosen. Then your target. Again, you have to set a target that I want to decide on a career path. I will identify three specific career paths. I will talk to people that have graduated from my degree and my career counselors. 
and my mentor. And why I'm doing this is so that I can focus on my job skills. And when do I need to do this? By end of semester one or by end of semester two. So when you're in college and you set such a goal, by end of semester one, you would have already decided, I have three career options. And then your next goal is, based on these career options, I am going to attend these specific conferences. So guess what? Now you will set on your calendar that January, there's this conference for this career path. February, there's this. So every single month, you are purposefully going towards your career goal, right? And so in that way, you're building your steps towards finding that mentor because you're now being very specific and purposeful to what you're looking for. Another goal that you can set is learning a specific skill, whether it's coding. I've seen a lot of Kenyans trying to get into data and all that. But you have to ask yourself, why am I, do I want to do data analytics? Or why do I want to do coding? Is it because it's part of my career path? If it is, great. If it's not, identify, you know, what are those specific skills you want to learn? And, you know, how can you achieve that particular goal? You can enroll in an online course, whether it's provided as part of your degree or not. Then you decide, do I need to wait until I have that degree? Or can I do this as part of an online certification course, that way I can start looking for internships as early as I can. Okay, nobody's going to refuse to give you an internship because you have a certificate, especially in IT. If you have a specific certificate in IT, they're going to give you an internship. So the other you're able to build again those relationships and you build those relationships from the internships, from the conferences, from the networking, from churches, from all those places I've said, you can find mentors. Um, and I will send you a uh, what I have just discussed, so you don't have to try and write all the notes. Um, the other, uh, another example of a career goal is, you know, uh, uh, find uh, whatever the career option is, find a business, so let's say, find a systems analyst mentor. So again, if you've already decided what are your three career options, then now you're taking those three career options and breaking them down. Whether it's your skills, is the skills that are needed for that career, whether it's a mentor you need to look for for each specific skill, whether it's whatever it is, now you, you are again focused and you're now getting more value out of your education, out of your relationships and out of everything that you're trying to pursue. That is all I had for today and I hope it was insightful. Wow. Wow. Thanks a lot, Emma, for that was timely and that was nice. I hope, uh, I just wish we had many students following up on, on this presentation today. Unfortunately, I think we are only two students here. That one uh, make me get worried that uh, if this information is not getting to us, as Professor said, it's true. We cluster ourselves around our peers without thinking of what will come tomorrow. And immediately we graduate we, found out, we find ourselves in Wonderland, not knowing what is next for us. And then that's the time you realize, oh, I heard about someone. You try reaching them. That time up it is here. You don't have an internship. You don't have where to go and you're stuck. You are almost running out of status. You don't know what to do. You, you, you panic. Some of us, we decide to do the wrong thing. Some of us, decide to go home out of pressure because you don't want to mess up with the system here and you don't yes. know what to do. But Emma, uh, I'll tell you this one was timely. I wish, uh, I know it's recorded, uh, it's recorded and those who follow Prof on uh, or our Facebook page will be able to follow up and get to learn. Those who, are just, who just came in, those who are enrolling, those of us who are almost finishing, this one was timely. Uh, I know what I've learned today. I know if I'll put it into practice, it's gonna help me going forward. Uh, thank you for the nice presentation. Uh, I believe now the floor is open for anyone who have a concern or a question or. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Gilbert, I want to really share, uh, go applaud one of our students here. Uh, Mr. Joel, Mr. Joel Mohanga, Joseph Mohanga is calling all the way from Kenya and he was assigned oh, to wow. Dr. Langat. 
Dr. Langa, that is your mentee. I don't know what time it is in Kenya. Joseph, are you there? Can you say something? Joel? Maybe he's muted. No, he's yeah, just unmuted, I think. But he actually called in two hours early. He's been up all night trying to really join oh, this. Wow. wow. I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> he even joined KTDR TV last week. He was watching. Can you can you say something? I know you unmuted, Joel. Maybe he's having issues talking, but I see he's unmuted. Joel, can you say something? Yeah, people sleeping, he doesn't want to bother them. <laughs> no, he's there. He's, he actually yeah. just unmuted because he was muted. You, so you, maybe you can ask him to use, uh, you can ask him to use the, uh, the chat window uh, below if he can hear us, you know. Yeah, yeah but Dr. Langa, that is your mentee that you, you, you've been talking with. He got a visa and he's on his way. He's going to, I think he'll be doing his PhD in chemistry. Yeah, and I told him uh, like once he, he, he gets here, you know, we'll touch base and uh, so far, we are making progress with the other one, and uh, yes. this is uh, this is a uh, create uh, you know, as uh, our presenter tonight said, you know, we didn't have uh, such infrastructure, you know, when we went through, and it is very unfortunate that uh, we have a small num number of students attending tonight. But I hope they will be able to. Um, listen and follow and turn in uh, in numbers uh, moving forward. Uh, one thing I want to just uh, mention is uh, or I light is being proactive, all right? I just want to highlight that uh, as you look for mentees, you get to um, be proactive and please uh, join any professional organization in your field for example, Gilbert, you can join maybe two or, you know, I believe there are professional yeah. association in your field. Nobody will tell you that I believe even your instructor will know your advisor may not. They are so busy that they will not even tell you the importance of that. Mm -hmm. uh, the presenter mentioned something about the uh, conference place. You can, uh, if you are not in a position to attend because those, those conferences, they are expensive sometimes, or you may need some funding to attend. Uh, if you have local one maybe in your institution, please try, talk to your advisor and say, I want to present, you know. Very true. And put it in your CV because whoever will see your resume down the line and say, Kilbert had presented this, maybe it is oral, Maybe it is a poster presentation. They know that if your abstract was accepted, you know, you are uh, you are sta you are standing out in the crowd. That's all I wanted to say. Uh, there are some things you will never learn in class, but I'm glad you know uh, Professor Girono came up with Kesid, which is really uh, helping a lot of students. Uh, sometimes it pains me because I know some students from Kenya, from where I am from, they graduated this past May. They have never made any arrangement regarding, you know, next door, their next step. And, uh, you know, as you say, Kilbert OPT will just, you know, and before they realize they will be out of status, which is very unfortunate. But if they were here, talk to me, and this, this is what we do, because trust me, right now, Spring term is a done deal. We are talking about 2021 fall. And if you are, don't have anything planned, lined up, that's it. And I believe that is the critical point your mentors will help you. Thank you. My name is uh, Professor Langa. I teach chemistry at the University of North Florida in Jacksonville. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Uh, Gilbert, uh, yeah. I wanted to say that that's my mentor that Professor Gerona assigned me. Oh, and, hey, well, good. Yeah, I'm so Thank happy you, and glad because he's really uh, kind of helped me and it's good. Thank you, Nancy, for that. So all the chemists are in the house today. All the chemists are in the house today, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's good. Mm -hmm.
Okay. You know, one, one other thing I wanted to, to reinforce, because I think the presenter did an awesome job, covered all areas, um, but one of the things she said is one mentor does not cover all the areas. In every aspect of your life, find somebody you can look up to. You know, there will be somebody, you know, one of my academic mentors does not even know about my family life, doesn't know anything mm -hmm. about me outside of the, of what I do. I have another mentor who knows everything about my family life, so I can discuss those thing, things with them. But, you know, in whatever you do, wherever you are, try to find somebody you can look up to. And one of the things that I say is, I, I always tell my students this, I tell them that if I can get to know them personally, it really helps. When they come to visit me in my office or if we, you know, even now we're doing uh, online, but they, will, they, they call in to Zoom with me and uh, I get to know them a little more because during those sessions, I ask them to, a little more. You know, what are you doing? What are you doing? How is COVID treating you? I can't, I don't have that opportunity to ask them those questions when we're in class. Mm -hmm. But outside, once I get to know that, uh, in fact, I had a student just this week who told me um, uh, her, her inside story about how she goes through depression. Sometimes she has those episodes. And, you know, it makes a big difference because when that student needs accommodation, guess what? I'm willing to help her get through whatever she needs to get through. So yeah. I'm saying this to say, as you take your classes, let your professors know you and do your best so that when they know you, they know you as a hard worker and they will go all out for you. They will help you even without you asking them to be mentors. They will, they will go out of their way to assist you. And when you do need help and you come to them, they already know you and they like you already because of your effort that you're putting in. So try to create a relationship. Look for an extra time to zoom in with them. If you're doing Zoom lessons, you know, find time outside of that and just talk to them and just ask them about anything. Ask them how did they get to the career they're in? And they, you know, it's interesting to us when students do that and we create a special interest in our students when a student distinguishes themselves and asks me questions and, and wants to know how I got where I, where I am. And one last thing I want to say is one of my mentors, just, just to plug in the point that I was making, you know, I had a master's degree already and I was hired to teach, I, I looked for a part-time job. I was teaching already at a university and I was hired to teach at another university, purely white school, purely white school maybe 1% black. And I did such an awesome job and I, I didn't realize that this, this department chair was looking at me. So he kept getting good reports. And eventually he called me at, you know, in his office and I, you know, I was not a full-time faculty there. I was just teaching part-time like an evening job. And he called me one day, one day and he told me, you know, Peter, you need to go and get a PhD. And he did not know that I was thinking about that. But now he brought that topic. I said, well, yeah, it's in my plan. So now because it was his idea, he started working things, try to help me to get, to get through to where I needed to go. Two years later, he moved from that university, went to another university, became the head of the, uh, the School of Accountancy at another university. And so one day he called me in and said, um, I just want to let you know that I'm leaving. I said, okay, where are you going? He told me where he was going. I said, do they have a PhD program? He's, he says, yes, they do. I said, okay, I'm coming with you. That's how I got accepted to the PhD program. As simple as that. I just said, I'm coming with you. And he said, let's go. So he went ahead of me. All I did was formality filling out the paperwork but I, he was in my corner. The whole time in my program, I had somebody in my corner. So that's why I was saying, you know, whatever you have to do, do your best, get to know your professors because you never know at what point you will need them. They will come through for you. So that's just my advice. 
I think if you do that, I think you will have a lot of different mentors in different areas. Don't just stick to one mentor. Get different mentors in different areas. So let me add on to what Peter just said, and I think, Peter, you read my mind quite well. But before then, uh, excellent presentation, Emma. I think you did an exceptional job. Thank you for, for doing that. In addition to that, I want to add on, it depends on the level of education. If you're coming for a community college, undergraduate, graduate, or postgraduate, it's a, somehow it's really different. But the key point, if you're a foreign student, especially a Kenyan student, you want to make sure that you build good relationships, especially with the native students. It's okay to, to hang around with Kenyan students, but, but sometimes you know group think misleads. But if you really associate yourself with more native students, it does build your confidence, and then it helps you understand the overall American culture as, as well as the learning culture. That, that's very, very important. The other thing I always I did was during my master's and my doctorate was every time I submitted my assignment to my professors, I always followed up with an email. Please go through my paper, depending on how you say it. Give me constructive feedback, and if you don't mind, sketch your time with me one-on-one. -on -one. I want you to give me a big picture of what you think, who you think I am and how I should improve. And actually, to Peter's point, at one point, I had a professor who I thought didn't like me at all. In fact, I wrote an email to her and said, hey, I think you don't like me. It's your problem. And I told my office, she told me, look, Jeremiah, you're a very brilliant young man. Your only problem is you're using your accent and color of your skin as an excuse. That's no excuse. Go back and get the job done. Trust me, because of that lady, I scored A's from that point on until I finished. And she, 10 years ago, single-handedly wrote me a recommendation letter. And that's how I became a professor. And she's a colleague of mine, and we've done big things since then. So my advice for students, please, please, please focus on native students because they understand the system. They have relatives and friends who are in different positions. That's how you get the jobs and that's how you grow. Jeremiah, you just struck something that, from my experience, <laughs> you know, um, this professor was actually discriminatory. I, I was sure that I got a B on my work because of my color. And I had to be very smart about it. So I went to his office and I, I sat there and I talked with him a little bit and in a very nice way. And I said, I want you now to help me because next time I want to make an A. You tell me what I need to do. What could I have done different in this paper to make, to get an A? So I want you to guide me because the next I want an A, okay? I'll be coming to see you so that I can make an A. So now I put the burden on them because if I don't make an A, they didn't give me good leadership because I told them, I want you to guide me to make an A. And they realized I was not going to settle for that kind of grade if I was doing an exceptional job. And believe it or not, I, I did well. I got an A from, there, from that point on. Because if, he did, if I didn't get the A, I would have been going back to him. What did I do wrong? You, you should have told, guided me. So, you know, I wasn't fighting him, but I was very pleasant in the way that I approached him. But I was also letting him know that I'm not going to settle for, just because you didn't like me, doesn't mean that I will settle for that grade. And uh, so he got the message and it worked real well. Yeah. So, Mr. Peter. Yes. That just validates my point that you have to be self-aware and set goals for yourself. You set a goal for yourself that you were going to get an A. Exactly. And so you got a B, you took the initiative, again, you took personal responsibility to go back to that person and ask, where did I go wrong? And what can I do to make it right? Guide me. And so now you're putting it on them to tell you and guide you in what it is that can get you that A. And so you just validated that. You have to be self-aware and set goals for yourself such that when you get to that mentor, they know that you know what you want and you're not getting any less than what you're looking for, pretty right. much. So you've set the bar high. They just have to meet you at that bar or go higher. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's, that's, that was nice, man. 
I think guys who, who didn't come out for today's meeting, they have themselves to blame because what, what came out today, um, I can assure you that we've never had such a good meeting because I've followed up all the meetings uh, uh, on KSEED students and this one is awesome. Thank you, uh, those who've gone ahead of us for those pieces of advice. And I believe the students who are here, if we have to follow into the advices, we, uh, the advice we've been given, I believe it's going to, to help us a lot. Gilbert, can we hear more from other students? Is uh, Joel able to speak? And then we Joel, have a Patrick. Joel said he can try. I don't know if Joel is been trying. I think he's having issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's probably muted us. Okay, but good. He did, he did respond in the chat that yeah, he, he did. he's with us. Okay, good. Okay. What is the Facebook page? And then again? What is the, can you share the Kessid Facebook page in the chart? Uh, uh, I will share it in a minute. <laughs> I don't think I follow it. I didn't realize there's one. There um, is, but, but I'll share it after this. I don't want to lose, but okay, maybe. Uh, <laughs> but, but thank you so much. I mean, this has been, this has been great. Like I said, even for me, I have learned a lot. I'm like, oops, I have not done this with my mentor. I've not done this pre 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 because I've been so busy. And you tend to get so busy and to get caught up. But uh, just to reiterate on what my, my colleagues said is building those relationships with faculty is important, extremely important. You know, I have students who come to me and they said, I want a recommendation. And I'll tell them, I can't write a recommendation for you because I don't know you. I don't know you that well to write a recommendation. But there are some that I'm like, what do you need? I don't even need anything. I'm like, okay, your recommendation is on the way because I know them so well that I can do anything. Even when I'm traveling, I can do anything for them. So again, really take time to build those relationships. I'm one of those who came to this country because there was a lady in Kenya who I really looked up, uh, you know, I admired what she was doing. I I was coaching, I was training, and she was in the U.S. already, and I just admired and liked what she was doing. And I approached and I said, hey, I'm interested. I'd like to go and study in the U.S. She's like, sure, you've been doing such a great job uh, with the students, with the athletes, and one of our sister was one of my athletes. So that's how I was able to come to the United States. So don't underestimate those relationships with people that you work with or whenever you're given an opportunity to do something, whether you're a graduate assistant, uh, whatever you're doing, just do it well. Give it your best, network, take advantage of those opportunities. We've had so many people who've come to Kesa and Keset, and that's how we've connected. And when we connect you here, we also connect you to other people out there. So all the mentors that you have here, they work for different corporations. We have Dr. Wanyama, who is with her. Dr. Wanyama, are you still there? is with Caterpillar and one of our mentors is with Cummings and they're always fighting. So Dr. Dr. Wanyama, say something. Yeah, well, I think, uh, yeah, must be wondering uh, who is this guy who does not have any mentors? It's not necessarily, <laughs> it's not 100% true. Uh, I've been very fortunate uh, in most of the, throughout my lifetime. And uh, I seem to, Wherever I go, I, I interact with a lot of people who are very friendly. And I have a fairly good network of people that I talk to every day. And uh, coming to the US, I, I was focusing more on you know, the advisor, student relationship, and the, uh, and the committee around me. However, there was also the community at large which uh, we had some African uh, students around, some African families, and we were interacting a lot. So uh, it, it didn't really occur to me that I must, I should have somebody, yeah, some people as mentors. I was not even necessarily thinking in terms of that. It's only that it's because I've, I interact a lot with people. 
yeah and i gain a lot from uh, uh friends colleagues uh and others even in in churches i have lots of friends and uh yeah, Gerono, you know, we have this big network. So this idea of mentorship, actually, it's only recently that I started thinking about it. But, uh, and then when I saw this uh, talk about uh, uh, ways of getting some mentors and all that, I decided that I, I needed to listen in. And I'm very grateful uh, to, uh, to Emma for actually highlighting some of the important areas that we need to look at. And uh, I'm beginning to think I probably end up with a mentor or so. What I'm thinking about now. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Wanyama. In fact, I have a mentor who's waiting for you, a mentee who is in Alaska. He just finished his undergrad in mechanical engineering. So I will be connecting you with him this week. <laughs> oh, okay. He's ready to get out of this cold place, so I will be connecting you with him tomorrow. I have all the contacts, and I told him I will link the two of you together. Okay. Thank you. Hello. 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 Infinix Hot 3, are you getting us? That must be Joel, right? No, I don't know if it's him. Oh, he disappeared. Yes, it's Joel. I decided to join. Hello. Hello, we are getting you loud and clear, Joel. Okay, well, I'm sorry. In the beginning, I was using my laptop and uh, it, it had a problem, I think, with the mic. Yeah. That's why you could not get me clearly. Right now, I've decided to join using my phone. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Yes. Okay, I must say that I'm very, very grateful. Um, Professor Gerono, I've been hearing you <laughs> and I've, I've actually attended the whole, the whole meeting from the very beginning up to now. Wow. And okay. I've... I've really gained a lot. Uh, some, I, I think uh, Jeremiah, Dr. Jeremiah had asked, how, what time is it right now? It is now 6.17 a.m. Okay. Uh, in Kenya. But I, I must say that I'm very, very grateful for today's session and um, everything that I actually didn't know about mentorship, I've learned it today. And... Uh, I just got the right group before I get to the seats. <laughs> and I'm so happy. I'm very happy about this group. I've learned a lot ever since I, um, I began joining, uh, the, the, attending these meetings. And it's been of great help to me. There is something that I noted um, and I thought I would talk about, about networking that was raised by Professor Gerono. Um, on understanding the power of networking, and it was actually reiterated by Emma, I would say, well, it would be very good, just as Emma had said, we try to reach out on our friends. I'm also trying to reach out on my friends here who are coming to the States, and uh, those that are already there also, and informing them about KCID. Um, I had told quite a number of them to join this meeting today, but uh, they were unable, I tend to think so. Uh, but I'll remind them, I've also been sending them the, the, uh, the links to the meetings, the recordings that we have already done before. Uh, and I am very, very grateful. I'm, this, I'm supposed to be, I'm actually a mentee to, to Professor uh, Joseph Lagat. Uh, we, we are in touch and um, we said we are going to be in, um, our interaction is going to be more once I get to the States. Uh, I thank God that I got my visa last week. Um, so I'll be traveling very soon. But I'm very, very grateful. Thank you so much. And uh, 
Professor Deuri had said uh, there is somebody is going to connect me to in Akinso at some point. I know we'll talk about mm -hmm. that when I when yes, I Joe, Joe, I will do that. Uh, we had a death in the family and I was dealing with funeral arrangements and all those things, but I will, I will definitely do that uh, this week. So, great, great, yes. great. Thank you so much. Yes, I'll get you connected. Thank you so much. What university yes. are you going to again? I just came back from Arkansas actually yesterday. What university are you going to? I'm going to the University of Arkansas, um, Fayetteville. I just came from Bayetville. Okay, that's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That's interesting. Great, okay, great. that's good. My yeah. daughter just moved there, so <laughs> I'll be you. seeing you more. <laughs> okay. All right. Great, great. And, and perhaps, Professor Gerono, you will perhaps guide me on the issues on, because I'm trying to book my flight and uh, sometimes I, I would really want guidance on like where I should go to um, in landing and such, such stuff. But perhaps you talk that with you one okay. on one um, via WhatsApp. Okay, we can do that with Professor Teori because he has a friend there and my daughter yeah. just moved there. So we can, the yeah. three of us can now. Uh, we can actually, can, there's a group there that they can, you know, pick you up or if they, you know, whatever. We'll, we'll, right. we'll, we'll do that with that, Professor Teori. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you for waking up. He actually joined the group. He, he joined Zoom two hours early. So I had to tell him, no, go back to sleep. <laughs> I am honored. Thank you for All right. Right. time. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. I, believe, I believe, Professor Cherono, you can carry us on. Okay, so I think uh, we can finish here. This is 10.30, so we can go to bed. I just want to thank all of you again. I think we had about five students, which is still okay. It's recorded. Uh, we can still share the information. I really want to thank you, Emma. This is amazing. She volunteered. She's done an amazing job. We will share the recording. I want to thank our mentors. Like I said, we're here to support you. We're here to help you every step of the way we've been there been there done that so we're here for you uh do not hesitate to reach out to us we have a twitter group we have two whatsapp groups we have telegram we have facebook just join us we share information all the time about education about different programs our december session we will do a graduation ceremony reception for those again most of the graduations are online so for our december session we will do uh graduation just a graduation ceremony for those who are graduating uh, i want to thank everyone again i really want to thank you for your time for your dedication for your willingness to just be there to support thank you emma 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 is now one of our mentors too so she yeah, we have a lot of mentors we have more mentors than students so <laughs> thank you everybody have a wonderful night and we'll see you We'll connect through WhatsApp, through social media, and we'll see you in December. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.